Hey, what's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger back in our video. This one's going to be about how to walk in the Spirit. It's very important as a follower of Christ to walk in the Spirit because when you're not walking the Spirit and you're feeding your flesh and you're walking in the flesh, you are now raging war against your spirit and your flesh is going to get the best to you. You're going to fall into willful sin. You're going to fall in a life of disobedience. You're going to fall into maybe the devil's snares and traps. Uh, it's a lot of problems, a lot of issues that happen in our life, guys, happens because we are not walking in the spirit. So I hope this video could empower you guys to give you guys some solutions and your problems that you're going through and how to walk in the spirit and not the flesh. Let's get it. Let's go. If you haven't already liked the video, subscribe to the channel. The number one scripture or actually the number one thing that when it comes to walking in the spirit is you want to give up your willful sin. You want to give up the bad habits and the worldly entertainment okay this is in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 verse 17 it says this i say then walk in the spirit and ye should not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and all these things are contrary to one another so that you can have to do the things that you would okay so when you, when you when you're living a life of willful sin you are living in the flesh you are serving the flesh and like the bible says your flesh is going to rage war against your spirit so it's going to be very hard to walk in the spirit and to hear the voice of the Lord when you're opening demonic spirits into your life or maybe you're building demonic strongholds through your disobedience, through your willful sin, okay? Next one up will be, you know, bad habits. You know, the things that we struggle with, you know, best believe when you're walking in the spirit, those bad habits, it's gonna be a lot easier to give up. It's gonna be a lot easier to not fall into temptation because you're more wiser and you're more stronger spiritually. And when you're, one thing I noticed about walking the spirit or just living in the spirit in general, you're not easily given over to your fleshly desires. Yes, you're going to be tempted because we're, we're all going to be tempted, but it's a lot easier to overcome those temptations. So that's one thing I noticed about walking the spirit through my testimony. Okay, next one up is also worldly entertainment. I made a video talking about this a couple months ago about a secular music. And if you're listening to music that's, if you listen to music all day, hours throughout the day, and that's talking about lust, I'm going to smash this, or I'm going to, you know, bang, bang, shoot them up, stuff like that, right? You're planting seeds in your mind to make you want to do those things. And, you know, best believe if the music you're listening to is promoting like lust and you're always listening to that. The mind is powerful. It's going to, you're feeding your mind that and it's actually building strongholds in your mind to want to do that more. So that's why I said the worldly entertainment, like the secular music, it should definitely be avoided. Now, if you're at the gym and you're getting motivational music, you know, the gym plays music, that's not going to do, it's not going to do nothing. But if you listen to that all, all the time, it could build up strongholds in your mind. So there's also another scripture I want to go over. This is in Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. It says, warfare is seen. We are also compassed about with great, with so a great cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily possess us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, okay? Let us run with patience, okay? What does that mean, patience? Is that we got to patiently endure. And that being patient is the fruit of the spirit. So when you're walking the spirit, you're going to take, the traits of, you're gonna take you're gonna in, uh, inherit the fruits of the spirit love joy peace gentleness kindness goodness faith long suffering etc uh, etc et okay so this is what happens when you walk in the spirit our next one up is you want to sow to the spirit in your obedience okay sow into your spirit okay remember you can sow into your flesh the willful sin through the bad habits through the worldly entertainment or you could you could sow into your spirit through your obedience okay walking in the spirit and this is what the bible says on Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. For he that sow into his flesh shall reap the flesh of corruption. But he that sow into the spirit shall reap the spirit, shall the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Okay, so it says that in, you will reap if you faint not. Because when you're in the spirit, you're gonna, sometimes you're going to get weak. Your flesh is, you know, is always going to be raging war against you. So that the Bible says, don't get weak. Don't grow weary. You know, not to say don't get weak, but don't grow weary because we can't control when we get weak. So it's like, don't get weary because in due season, we're going to reap a harvest. You know, there's always in the Bible, God talks about over and over again to his children that if you're obedient, he will, he will bless you. Now I have a scripture. I'll go over that in a bit, but it's always talking about, you know, blessings through your obedience you know, and discipline, you know, that's what all about being the follower of Christ is having discipline over your life, over, you know, your spirit. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's it. And also one thing too, sowing to your spirit, what is spirit, sowing to your spirit? Obedience, uh, maybe having a prayer life, um, fasting. You know, I always tell people, if you're ever struggling with demonic strongholds or demonic spirits or things that are keeping you in bondage, 
you could definitely try some fasting. Uh, 24 hours, what fasting is, I have tons of videos on this. You can just type in Mark the Messenger fasting, it'll pop up. But uh, pretty much you wanna just be drinking water only. Uh, there's different types of fasts. There's a dry fast, there's a water fast. For me, I do a mix of both, but if you wanna start off for beginners, I would just recommend 24 hours of just water and no food, no soda, just water alone. Okay, so, okay, that was number two. Number three is put away fleshy desires and present your body as a living sacrifice for God, okay? So um, when it comes to a lot of stuff, like the lust stuff, like, cause remember our bodies are a temple of the Lord, so we don't wanna be, you know, masturbating, watching porn, uh, living a life of fornication, uh, committing adultery and stuff like that. So we wanna make sure that our bodies are a temple and we're using it for the Lord, okay? This is in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, so it says, and be not conformed to this world, because what does the world do? The world, the world promotes that type of stuff. The world participates in that type of stuff. So we got to renew our mind and, uh, you know, tap into this Bible and read it and apply it to our life, because we realize that this world is teaching us death. This world is teaching us to live and serve the flesh, which leads to death, which I have a scripture to go over that too in a little bit. Okay, so also Romans chapter um, eight, uh, Romans chapter eight, verse 13 to 15. This is what I was talking about just right now. So it says, if you, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the spirit to mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Uh, verse 15 says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption where, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay. So it says that if you live after the flesh, you shall die. What does this world promote? You turn on your TV, you listen to the radio, um, you watch Netflix. For the most part, not all the time, but it's, it's promoting fleshly things, okay? And it's death. That's Satan. The Bible says that Satan is the God of this earth, okay? So he controls this earth. God allows him to. But it's up to us to, you know, walk away from saying it's up to us to have the spirit of truth and be led to, you know, okay, certain things are of the devil. Certain things are going to destroy my life. So let me put it away. Let me walk in the spirit so I don't fall into these fleshly temptations. Okay, so that's number three is you want to put away your fleshly desires. And that could be anything. It's not just only your lust. It could be anything. Like, it could be like you having, you having like the love of money in you. You know, that could be a fleshly desire. So always understand that. Number four is... You want to obey the voice of the Lord, you know, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is in John chapter 10, verse 4. It says, And when he put forth his own sheep, he go before him, he go forth before him, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Okay, so anyone who's a true uh, sheep of Christ, okay, we know his voice. Okay, we know when he's directing us to go this way. We know when he's telling us that, hey, we, we got to give up that bad habit. Hey, we got to repent from our willful sin. Hey, some of these worldly entertainment are leading us astray. Hey, um, maybe that relationship, you know, is someone, someone sent by the devil. You know, that's why I have videos, signs that someone sent from the devil, signs that someone is a demon, because maybe those people are, and they're dragging you to hell because that's where they're going. So the, uh, Jesus in God, the Holy Spirit speaks through us. So it's up to us to take heed, to hearken to the voice of the Lord. Okay, next one up, it says, this is a verse I was talking about earlier. It says, this is De Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse one to two. Remember I said, if you, when you are obedient, the Bible says, not just this verse, but, so many, there's like over a hundred verses, probably even more than that, where it clearly says that you will be rewarded for your righteousness. You will be rewarded for, you know, a serving God, walking in the spirit. Okay. So it says that, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently into the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Okay, so if you hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. So like I said, those bad habits that we don't even know they're bad habits because Satan has deceived a lot of us. Okay, the Bible says Satan deceives the entire earth in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Okay, so it's a lot of things that we do in life. We have no idea it's a bad habit. We have no idea it's a sin. So the voice of the Lord will speak to you, son, daughter. You got to, you know, start walking the spirit so you can see the corruption. Because remember, because he who sows his flesh shall reap corruption. So when you're when you're obeying the when you're listening and obeying the voice of the Lord, it's good. And, and God's patient with us, so He's not going to just send us to hell. You know, He's going to give us time. He's going to give us His Spirit to strengthen us. But it's up to you to be to obey. You know, obedience. Okay, which is all walking in the Spirit. That's what it all correlates to the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit. Okay, number uh, five is 
also, oh, also number four says, I read that verse this earlier, but it says in Romans chapter eight, verse 14, it says, for as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God, okay? So anyone who's being led by the spirit of God is a son of God, okay? So number five is abide in Jesus Christ, okay? This is, this is key, man. All right, so this is in uh, Romans chapter eight, verse nine. Not a lot of people tell us this, guys, but this verse is very important, okay? So it says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So we got to be examining ourselves daily. I'm going to make a video on that too, guys, on examining, uh, how to examine yourself. So don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so it says, now that if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So we got to have the spirit in Christ in us so we can walk in the spirit because Jesus wasn't walking in the flesh. Now, he had temptations like we all do, but he was not walking in the flesh. So when you have the spirit in Christ in you, it's a lot easier to walk in the spirit to be obedient. Because you'll just be, you're gonna, you're not going to be just like him without sin, but you're going to take on his traits. You're going to have the same spirit. That's why it says the spirit of Christ. Okay. And this is the next verse. This is John chapter 15, verse 4. It says, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For you can, for without me, you cannot do nothing. So without Christ, we can do nothing. So we, to be able to walk in the spirit, okay, we got to have Christ in our life. We have to have a personal relationship with the son, Jesus Christ, okay, the son of God. All right, next one up is, number six is, you want to fellowship with those who are also walking in the spirit. Because the Bible says, evil communications corrupt good manners in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. So if you're friends with the ungodly or you're friends with someone who is walking in the, uh, walking in the flesh that has no spiritual connection with God, uh, that's not trying to stay on the narrow path, that's, that's a blasphemer of the Holy Spirit, uh, makes fun of other you know believers. Okay, if you're friends with these type of people, these type of people who are just living in willful sin, they got bad habits, not saying that you can't talk to these type of people, but if you're hanging around with this type of person every single day, they're going to influence you to do things that God has already convicted you of. Okay, the Holy Spirit has already convicted you of that this is something that you, you shouldn't be around. And best believe, guys, a lot of times when I fell short, it was because I was fellowshipping, I was around the wrong people. So you want to fellowship with those who are walking in the spirit. When you're fellowshipping with those who are walking in the spirit, it makes it a lot easier because you guys are going to hold each other accountable. So if you do fall short, that brother, that brother or that sister is going to help you get back up. Okay, that's what it's all about. Being a, taking accountability and having other people to, you know, if, maybe if you don't see your error, your faults, so you have someone else to correct you in love, you know, in unity. And that's what it's all about because the Bible says two is better than one. So fellowshipping is key. Whether you have um, a family member or a friend, or maybe you got like a, a certain church member and they're walking in the spirit, that's important to keep them around and make sure that both of you guys are holding yourself accountable, not in a judgmental way or a hypocritical way, but you know, just because sometimes we don't know, we don't know any better. Iron sharpens iron. Uh, that person might have more wisdom than me, or that might person have more knowledge than you, more understanding than you. So that's what it's all about, guys. Okay, so this is how to walk in the spirit. Number one is give up willful sin and bad habits and worldly entertainment. Number two is sow into the spirit and your obedience. You know, it's good to have a prayer life. Number three is put away fleshy desires and present your body as a living sacrifice for God. Number four is obey the voice of the, of the Lord, of the Holy Spirit. Number five is abide in Jesus Christ. Number six is fellowship with those who are also walking in the spirit. Iron sharp is iron. If you guys made this far, please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more uh, content. I love you guys so much. If you guys wish to, you could share this on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. Mo, peace.